On the 6th September 2018, Bolton John was found dead in his own apartment. His death was a mistake, or I can say that the death was caused by a mistake. The murderer was his neighbor, but she was not even that close to be called a neighbor. I know it sounds complicated, so let's put things into perspective. So things turned out that on that day, Amber Geiger, an off-duty police officer, went back home after a working day. She entered the Dallas, Texas apartment of 26-year-old accountant Bolton John, but she thought it was her home. So she shot both of them at his, at his top left, believing he was a burglar. The guy lay down, felt on the ground, bleeding nonstop, and the woman cried of fear, realizing that it was not even her home, and she just caused a big problem. Amber Geiger called the 911 operator to ask for help, but when the wounded man breathed his last, she knew there wasn't anything in this world could make this man alive anymore. But ladies and gentlemen, the thing that I want to tell you is about what happened one year later, the 1st of October 2019, when the case ended up with Geiger getting a 10-year sentence in prison and both them family losing him forever. When the judge asked both them's family whether they wanted to say anything to Geiger, everyone declined. But Brand John, both them John's brother, an 18-year-old boy says, yes, I want to. And ladies and gentlemen, he stood up in, the front of, in front of people in the middle of a trial, and he said he forgave her. Brand John forgave his brother's killer. We all know that knowledge of death can cause a variety of reactions, from confusion to devastation to anger and probably revenge. And probably Bran was suffering the same pain and sadness of losing a loved one, but still, he decided to forgive the murderer. It doesn't mean that he doesn't love his brother. The grief doesn't go away. But these difficult emotions, pain, sadness, become less intense as you start to move on with your life. And losing loved ones is such a hard thing to overcome. Imagining all the following days in your life without them keeps passing by, the world still operates normally, people still live their life, it just hurts a lot. And especially when they're murdered, there are people who choose to live, he, who choose to live the rest of their life saying to the murderer, I hate you, I wish I could get you back. But also there are people who let reality clear their minds. Nothing in the world could bring their beloved ones back. And they faced the problem. It just frees their minds knowing that the problem is settled. And this guy, Brand John, he chose the second one. And the thing surprising more is when he asked the judge to go there and hug Amber Geiger. To go there and to cuddle her and to embrace her. And ladies and gentlemen, after many readings and research, I can assure that that was not for cameras. It was not for any publicity. It was Brand John, his heart, and his brother. We all know Brand John and his family loved both of John a lot. But people decided to move on. It was a heinous thing before I forgive you. It was a heinous thing after I forgive you. But I choose not to be locked in a bond of hatred and bitterness with you for the rest of my life. I let that go. And that was what Brand John did. And I'm not telling you this story to advise you to forgive criminal actions, but to live with compassion. The woman, Amber Geiger, even if she felt sorry for what she had done, but no one accepted it, would she remake her life for a better living after she got out of jail? Maybe no. She will live the rest of her life in the darkness of regret and pain. But people, Brand John, the brother of the person that she was guilty of the most, forgave her, and I can say that his actions, his words, was actually saving her life. And in life, people, life is hard, but it, but it always gives us a lot of options. And in some cases, there's no option called a good one, but just pick the best one. Hello, everybody. I'm Wendy Aflum from class 9B1 of Vin School Time City. And today, with the story of Ban John being raised about decision making, the question I will be discussing about is why is making decisions essential for leadership? So you see, our life is a long chain of making decisions. It does not matter whether your choice is made accidentally or intentionally. 
They all matter a lot to your life and even others, and it works like a domino effect. Every time you make a choice, you are making an impact. Why? Because choosing one path means that you have chosen to abandon another, and if you don't regret the decision you made, then you must have chosen a good one. But you know what? No matter what road you decide to take, you can never stop yourself to think, to imagine what your life would be if you had taken the another one. Now, many of you would have wondered how the story about making a decision that I just told you can have a connection to our topic today, leadership. Well, please let me explain my idea. So mostly, people define leadership as guiding a group of people. Surely that's the thing coming up first in the mind of people, and I don't deny that. But how about leadership as empowering people? I believe leading is making effective impact. And to be able to influence the community around you, the first, you the first thing you should be doing is to be leading yourself and to live in a positive way. In other words, individualized leading should be the first thing to be done. Then comes collective leading. And how well-founded your individualized leading depends on how accurate the decisions you make. That's why we should be living happily, putting effort into everything we do so we won't be regretful of our unretrievable choices. When you're doing well in your life, emotionally, you are adding positive attitude to life, to your people, to, fam to your family, to your friends, and to everyone in your society. And that is empowering, and that is making effective impact. So it is leadership. What I'm trying to say is that we can guide ourselves living in a way in which we will find happiness and not feel regretful about what we, had, what we have done and the most powerful weapon that you possess which can help you whenever you are stuck with a decision is your wisdom. For people who don't know the distinction uh, between wisdom and knowledge is, then you just need to know that wisdom is more than that. Humans have chosen words like deep, immeasurable, and priceless to describe this virtue. It cannot be learned. Wisdom is what you can gain when you experience, gain knowledge, explore, and make your mindset wiser with everything in this world, see what the true beauty occurring in our daily life is, and even find out what the essential meaning of living is supposed to be. What wisdom brings to you is the ability to possess such wonderful humility and morality. And now, I would love to tell you the story about a woman with wonderful resilience, but she didn't make a good choice at first, but then she did. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Monica Lewinsky. Lewinsky, Monica Lewinsky, I'm sorry. Five years ago, she was standing on the TED Talk show like I'm doing and opening up about what happened to her two decades ago that was known by people all over the world. And now I, I know there are probably many of you who recognize this woman and her story, right? For people who don't know, then Monica is 46 years old right now. And two decades ago, actually 24 years ago, she made her biggest mistake probably in her whole life, which was having a crush on a man who was 27 years older than her. But age wasn't the problem. But the status of the man she loved was actually the problem. In 1995, when she was 22 years old, she fell in love with Bill Clinton, the 44th President of the United States of America. After two years of secretly having an inappropriate relationship with each other, Bill and Monica's secret broke out. And in a TED Talk show, she confessed that over just one night, only one night, her secret was exposed. And she went from a completely private figure to a publicly humiliated one worldwide. And there are people who listen to this and who might think that, like, yeah, she deserved it. It was her fault that she fell in love with a married man. It was her fault that she fell in love with the President of the United States. But can you imagine it? After just one night, your biggest secret is, is exposed. Everyone know it, everyone knows it. And when the next morning, you went out for walking, and you saw people playing down on you. You lost your reputation, and you lost your dignity. 
it was so hard, people, and that that was what Monica had gone through, had had gone through, and all sorts of news plastered her photos all over the place. A TV show talked about her to keep people tuned in, and online advertisement took her image out of context to make more clicks. And every single day, for a long period of time, she was followed by a gaggle of reporters questioning her nonstop. And life was almost unbearable, she says. And let me tell you why, how the life was almost unbearable. People took her private actions, people stole her private words, and then made them into public, made them public. Public without consent, public without context, and public without compassion. It, it was so hard for her. Like in the darkness of being humiliated so badly, it seemed like there was no hope for her to continue living. And her family even made her take a bath while the door opened. Why? Because her family was too afraid that she would kill herself in a bathtub. And we should be thinking about how terrible, how dark, how bad her life was, that it forced a human being who was supposed to have the right to live happily to consider suicide. But ladies and gentlemen, as, as I said before, it, at the beginning of this story, she didn't make a good choice at first. But then, in the darkness of being humiliated so bad, there was actually a light. And at that moment, he, she made her best decision by catching that light, and she decided to continue living and not jumping off from a George Washington bridge to her death. Monica Lewinsky is the most beautiful example showing that people can make thousands of wrong choices, but with just one right decision, people can have a way out. And the proof is she was in her own darkness of knowing nothing, but she got out of the dark zone by starting to live and to experience. And you know, after all, life is somehow denoted like a cardiograph. I have the cardiograph here. And as the graph, do you know the cardiograph? The graph? Like it never stops rising up and moving down until the death approach. So do our lives. They do have ups and downs, but everything will be okay if you are willing to choose the best answer, to choose to take the risk and move on. And ladies and gentlemen, leadership learning is lifetime activity. Make your words and actions weigh heavy with your wonderful weapon given by this life, your wisdom to make the best choice. Thank you so much for listening.